like a tattoo by Sade, or as I like to call her, Sade, because it's S-A-D-E. When we were in like first grade, we learned that that's how spelling works. Disrespectful for me to change how you pronounce someone's name. Okay, I'll call her Sade, you win. Friends and relatives, people of the world, we are going to learn the chords and the solo. Let's start with the solo. Standard guitar, standard tuning. Fifth fret, third string from the top. Oh, so nice. Then you're gonna play the fifth fret on the third string from the bottom. I use my pointer finger for that first note and then I just kinda rock my pointer finger down onto that other string. So good. Then you're gonna play the seventh fret on the third string from the bottom. Then play seventh fret on the third string from the bottom again, but immediately slide up to eight. So it goes a little something like this. Oh, you just have to play with passion. Play with as much passion as humanly possible. Next part, play eight on the third string from the bottom again. The very same note you just played. Then you're just gonna move your ring finger on back to that seventh fret on the same string. But right after you play the seventh fret, you're gonna pull off to five. So that means when you play that seventh fret, have your pointer finger ready to go on the fifth fret of the same string. Then right after you play seven, you're just gonna pull your finger off. If you can, give the string a little flick when you pull it off. And then you're just gonna put your ring finger right back onto seven and pluck seven again. So that last part there was eight, seven, five, pull off to five, and then back to seven. So when you put these first two parts together, it goes So the timing, how are we gonna get this rhythm and this timing all sorted out? For these first couple phrases, these first couple little licks of the solo, here's the trick. When the song starts, you're gonna count to four and then start. I'll let me show you what I mean. The song starts, it goes one, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four. Notice how everything comes right after beat four. We'll go through that a couple more times, but first let me show you the next part. So where we left off is we just went like that. It was sounded so passionate when you played it. I'm really proud of you. You're gonna play the seventh fret on the third string from the bottom again, except switch to your pointer finger. And I'll show you why, because we're gonna play that seven. Then with the middle finger, you're gonna go to eight. Then with the ring finger, you're gonna go to 10. Then you're gonna play the 10 again and slide up to 12. So that was seven, eight, 10, slide up to 12. Play that with me. Here we go. Oh, so, so poisonous the way that came out of your guitar. Let's play these first three little licks. Remember, I'm counting to four, then we go. Count to four, then we go. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Oh, passionate. Next part of the song. This part's fun. I love this part. It's not too hard either. You're gonna go all the way up to the 12th fret on the third string from the bottom. The G string, the third string from the bottom is getting a lot of love in this song. You're gonna play that third fret from the bottom on the 12th fret. Then immediately hammer on to 13. So you've got your pointer finger on the 12, you play the string, and then your middle finger just goes boom. It smashes down onto the 13th fret. Great. Then immediately after that, your pointer finger is gonna go to the 10th fret on the same string. Play that, and then hammer on to 12. When I hammer on to 12, I like to use my ring finger. So it goes boca boca. So good. Then there's a pause right there. And then pointer finger goes to eight, and we're gonna hammer on from eight to 10. I'm using my ring finger again. Then we go to seven and do a hammer on from seven to eight. So here's how all of that wrapped up in a nice little bow. It goes. So good, so good. After this, you're gonna go to the seventh fret on the third string from the bottom. Like I said, a lot of third string from the bottom stuff going on here. I felt the need to reiterate that to you at this point in time. You're gonna play the seventh fret, but then pull off to five. Remember when we did that earlier? So we're doing it again. Pulling off with ring finger to the pointer finger, give it a little flick when you do it. Then you go right back to seven and play.
play that note. So that was... Okay, okay. Ready for a couple more notes? After that, after that little... Bow, bow, then you're just nice and calm and cool and collected. Gonna play the third fret on the third string from the bottom. There's one more little part, but I think we should probably play all of this all the way. Let's play the new part all the way through, starting from the... You ready? Here we go. And... Oh. oh, guys. Oh, guys. I don't have any really good tricks for you about counting for this part. I really like the thing about counting to four for the first part. For this part here, I think you're just going to want to play along with the song. It's not too fast, so just play along with the song. You'll get the rhythm. It's going to be great. But now let's learn the last couple notes. Put your ring finger on the fifth fret of the third string from the bottom. Have your pointer finger, however, ready on the third fret of the third string from the bottom. We're about to do some pull-offs and hammer-ons. You're gonna play that fifth fret on the third string from the bottom, immediately pull off to the third fret, then you're gonna play the third fret, and then hammer on to the fifth fret. Oh, so passionate. Let's play it all the way through. One, two, three, four. Here we go. The nice thing is if you play it with enough passion, you don't even need to play the rhythm exactly the same as the guy does on the thing with the stuff. Let's move on to the chords. There's uh, The solo shows up from time to time in the song. He pretty much does that same thing every time. Um, so yeah, it's time for the chords. But oh, I, for, I forgot, I have bad news about the chords. So here's the thing with the chords. In, the, in live performances, I'm, one li I'm basing this all on one live performance. The guy's doing this chord, he's going. And he goes up to here. And then in the chorus he goes. Great, okay, we're all good, we're all good. It sounds, sounds nice, right? I like it. There's some tricky chords, but I'm on board. But here's the thing. Listening to the, the, the studio recording, I'm pretty sure they've got a capo on the first fret and they're playing something ever so slightly different. And I, for one, like the studio recording a little bit more. It's a little easier to play. It sounds a little better. So I don't know if the guy just forgot his capo that night. Um, I think that's unlikely. I think it was probably deliberate. But we're going to do the capo version, guys. You're... You're gonna be happier with it. It sounds more like the song, get a, get a flippin' capo. I even, I even have Amazon associate links with the capo and everything. Look at this. So much capo salesman. Big capos paying me so much money. Guys, get your capo on the first fret, but we're still in standard tuning. And you have to play this chord. Let, doesn't that sound just like the song? Pointer, top string, we're not even gonna play it. For this first part. Are we, do we play the, I'm not sure we play the top string at all. Pointer finger, second fret, second string from the top. The next string is just gonna be open. Open like a, like a, like a, like a, like a bleeding wound. There you go. Middle finger on the second fret of the third string from the bottom. Ring finger, second fret, second string from the bottom. Pinky, second fret on the bottom string. This is a B minor nine chord. I get my thumb up here to mute the top string. Okay, great. That, I think that sounds great. And on this chord, we're gonna play down, down, up, up, down, up, up, down. So that was down, down, up, up, down, up, up, down. Down, down, up, up, down, up, up, down. Here we go. Okay, that's enough. So that's the strumming throughout the entire thing. Get used to it. Take a picture. On this right here, we're gonna go down, down, up. I just, I just said that. 
I literally just said that. Next chord, this is probably the hardest chord shift in the whole song. We just did the B minor nine. Now we're going up to an E minor nine. It's a little confusing because of the capo. We're just gonna, we're just gonna count. This is the first fret, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. So it looks like the eighth, but it's actually seventh. You know the drill maybe, or maybe you don't, whatever. So you're gonna put your middle finger on the seventh fret of the second string from the top, pointer finger on the Fifth fret, looks like the sixth. Fifth fret of the third string from the top. Ring finger goes on the seventh fret of the third string from the bottom. Pinky goes on seventh fret of the second string from the top. This chord shape might feel like a crazy stretch at first, mostly just getting this pointer finger back here. Give it some time, you're gonna do it. For some people, they like to have it with all this space down here. I personally bring my thumb up over the top and see how my fingers are at these weird kind of angles. Then my thumb gets to mute the top string, which is helpful as well. Another thing about this chord, the bottom string, we just want it to be muted. So you do not have to have the bottom string ring out. It can ring out and that's okay, but it doesn't need to be. E minor nine. So here's the deal. We're doing the same strumming on that. Down, down, up, up, down, up, up, down. Just one time through that pattern on each chord. So it's a, it's a tricky switch. That's my, that's my middle name is Tricky Switch. Just give it time. You have plenty of time to switch. This chord is gonna take some practice, but I'm telling you guys, it's not a bar chord. There's nothing, there's no crazy stretching. You can handle it, just it might take you, it might take you a few hundred times doing it, not exaggerating. Just practice going back and forth. You're gonna do it a bunch, so get used to it. Okay. That happens three times. After we play through those two chords three times in a row, then we're gonna go to a D major seven chord, which is as thusly follows. Pointer finger is gonna smash down on the bottom three strings on the second fret. You are welcome to use three different strings if you'd like, but for me, that's a tight squeeze. It's easier for me just to mash down with my pointer finger. You can even have your middle finger help your pointer finger mash down. You also would like to make sure the top string is muted by your thumb. For this whole song, if you're not muting the top string with your thumb, you might wanna consider it. Or if you're like, nope, screw you, I'm not gonna do it, then just be very careful not to strum the top string. If you aim for the bottom like three strings, then you will have a much better chance of not accidentally hitting that top string. End of top string rant or whatever. Okay, D major seven chord. We're gonna do the exact same strumming. It sounds a lot like our B minor nine. That's okay, it's supposed to. And we're gonna go down, down, up, up, down, up, up, down. And then we just go to the F minor, F, uh, E minor nine again. And that's how you play the verse to the song Like a Tattoo by Sade. Let's play it all the way through once. One. Two and a one, two, three, four. Hey! Oh! That was two times. One more time. Oh! Now the D major seven. Back to the E minor seven. Guys, you did great. Okay, at this point, second little guitar solo comes in. You can play more of the guitar solo if you'd like, or you can just keep strumming back and forth between the B minor nine and the E, e minor nine. That's it. It's on the. It was on that fret. I was testing you. After the guitar solo, it goes back into the verse. Just a tiny little verse. It's like a mini verse into the mini verse. Stuart and the mini verse of madness. The, ver the, the, the mini verse just goes like this. B minor nine. Up to the E minor nine. Just like we did before, it just does that two times, done with the mini verse, done forever. <laughs> then we go into the chorus. The chorus is where the capo really does its magic. I really, I really truly, honest to goodness, believe that they use a capo in the recording. I'm, I'm very defensive about this. What do you guys know about the F major seven chord? Check it out. Bottom string open, pointer finger, first fret, second string from the bottom, middle finger, second fret, third string from the bottom, ring finger, third fret, third string from the top. Get your thumb up here to mute the top string. 
same exact strumming. Great. Then we're gonna go to an A major seven chord, guys. This one is bottom string open, ring finger on the second fret of the second string from the bottom, pointer finger first fret, third string from the bottom, middle finger second fret, third string from the top, thumb is once again muting the top string. Great. Then we go right back to the F major seven. And then here's the best part, you guys. We're gonna go to a crazy little like G major seven with a six, or maybe you could call it like an A sus chord of some kind, but here's all we're gonna do. We're gonna take these three fingers and we're just gonna go boom, boom, boom over two frets. So now we're on five, four, three, and do the same thing. So let's play the chorus together. One, two, three, four. Then the A major seven. Back to the F major seven. Then slide it up. Then it just starts over. It does that four times, guys. Does it quattro times. Spanish for four. Surprised you didn't know that. Then we go back into the guitar solo. This is another guitar solo, just a Oh, and then the guitar solo is just B minor nine to E minor nine. So many times, so many times. I have notes here about how many times I literally just wrote a lot. Then we go into the chorus. The second chorus is exactly the same as the first chorus. You just do it eight times, no, two, uh, you do it some amount of times, two times. You play it two times instead of four times. And then we go to the outro. The outro is just this, it just goes. Remember those two chords? Just the last two chords of the chorus. Our F major seven, up to our G major something, whatever. And then it fades out. It just fades out, you guys. That was a good fade out. I'm proud of myself. So anyway, that's how you play it. You can like and subscribe or whatever. Should have said that earlier.